Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Retro Recall. Hope you're doing awesome. So in yesterday's video, uh, in part three of our series, we went ahead and modified the Dallas real-time clock chip uh, by adding, uh, by modifying, by exposing the two uh, points uh, with a battery, the negative and positive leads. We attach leads to the chip itself and put a coin cell battery holder on the RTC chip. So uh, pretty, pretty straightforward in that video. Um, I'll link it at the end. If you haven't seen it, I recommend you take a look at that. Um, in today's video, we're going to put together the system again, because initially the reason we even went through the entire process of this series was to um, take the whole system apart, do an orientation of what uh, what was included in the system and remove the Dallas real time chip to do the modification. Now, as I mentioned in the other video, there's different uh, modifications you can do uh, in terms of you can purchase other ones that are available online uh, with a different company. You were able to do the mod as, as you see here that I've done in yesterday's video. And you're also able to purchase uh, pre made ones with their own PCBs as well as the coin cell holder uh, right on the um, chip. So there's different methods to do it. This is just the method I had chosen to do for this series. And again, uh, depends on what you want to do to, to do that. So the first thing we're going to do is, I mean, we're going to get right to it. So I'm going to go ahead and insert this uh, chip back into the board. And so I'm just going to go ahead and ensure that all the chip, or sorry, all the pins are aligned. I mean, I've been doing quite a bit of work um, on this chip, and I just want to be absolutely sure that uh, they're pretty much straight. Now, um, there's different ways to straighten pins. I mean, these are far enough apart that I'm able to use my fingers in here to, to change them out. But um, the old mechanical pencil trick is very, very common uh, when doing that, where you know, with no lead in it, you just stick the, um, the head of the pencil on it and you move it accordingly uh, where you need to go. So I'm just going to go ahead and pop this chip back in. And I'm just going to be very careful to ensure that all the pins are aligned because we want to make sure that when we put this in, that none of the uh, pins get uh, bent uh, in the process. So I just went ahead and inserted that briefly. And I'm just going to take a look at the chip just to be absolutely sure that all the pins are lining up where they should be. And I believe they are. And I'm looking at the other side here as well. That looks pretty good. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and just put a little more force in that just to put that in the socket. And there we go. So we have the Dallas real-time uh, chip that's modified in put back into the um, into the motherboard. And um, yeah, so I think, um, remember originally when we did this, we socketed. Um, we put the socket in there because originally this was not socketed. And so therefore we had to uh, remove the... Uh, remove the actual chip from the board using the solder remover tool and uh, go from there. So yeah, that's as easy as that. We just pop it back in and that's the orientation at which the chip was originally in the board. So I'm going to put that aside just for a second here and um, and bring over the back plane. So this is the back plane. And the nice thing about this case, again, like I had mentioned before, is that the actual back plane allows me to... Um, allows me to do this where I'm able to take the back plane out and I'm able to work on it, mount the, mount the motherboard back on, uh, do the work I need to do, and then just put it back in the case, which is, which is very handy. I, I just noticed that these, I'm just going to make sure I get the right one here. I just remember, I just noticed that the uh, standoffs here are a little loose. So I'm just going ahead and tightening these just to be absolutely sure that we're not going to have any issues. Um, I've gone ahead and removed motherboards before where <laughs> unfortunately you take this off and then all of a sudden um, the standoffs come back with it. All right. So just to make sure this is oriented correctly, um, this is the way it goes in here, I believe. And there's one standoff that locks in place and then the four screws align accordingly. So you can see the four screws here lining up with the four standoffs that are there um, to put back in the back in the case. So yeah, let's just get started and put the screws back in. I'm really excited to see what's on this mystery PC again. When I got this PC um, from the from the user, this uh, system was purchased for business, wasn't used a heck of a lot uh, and then put away in storage and 
And then I was graciously donated it and very excited to have this system. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to get past the the uh, BIOS uh, interface. And again, um, due to the battery. So um, it's just really nice to see, uh, really nice to be able to go through this process and, and be in a good place. Okay, so we go ahead and it's, it's fairly simple. I mean, the motherboard has the four screws. I'm just going ahead and double checking. You don't have to over tighten these. I mean, just finger tight. Uh, again, not a lot of tension required to hold this on. Uh, the the um, interlocking standoff is into the into the back plane here, no problem. And then on this side, we have a couple of rubber standoffs that are in place to hold this end of the board, just where there's no screw holes on this side. That's what it came with. So let's go ahead and uh, bring the tower up and we'll go ahead and put the back plane back into the case. All right, so we have the case on the bench here. To access the motherboard properly this time, I mean, we discovered this in one of the last videos, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the hard drive caddy here. And because this just slides right out, just like so. And if we had known that before, we would have been <laughs> in a better place to take out those power cables. I mean, either way you can do it the way we did it, but it just creates a better environment to be able to get in and access the back plane. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just flip this around this case and we'll be able to access the opposite side of the um, of the tower so yeah I mean here it is uh, this is the back side of the case and the back plane should just go ahead and nicely slide in here and uh, we should be good to go I'm just gonna go ahead and slide this in nicely holding it in place there while we put it in And we'll slide it back there. There we are. And that's it. I love this case design. I really do. I love being able to go in and put the uh, put the case in this way. And it just I don't know. It just creates a better uh, a better. I'm just make sure it's all lined up here. Uh, it just creates a better work environment to be able to get it in. Now it, the alternative is you flip it around. And you can um, you can go ahead and work on it from the inside of the case. But unfortunately, sometimes that just creates a creates a harder work environment to go within. Uh, so it's just nice to be able to do it this way. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a couple screws in here, and uh, we'll be we'll be all set there. So I'm just noticed there's a little bit of a twist here. So I'm just going to get it all in place. And I'm just leaving one screw loose while we arrange the other screw here, just to make sure it's all lined up. Because if you tighten that too much, you don't have a lot of flexibility here. Okay, so we have that in, we have that in, and we have our other back plane screw in, and everything's lined up here, which is great. All right, let's flip it back around, uh, and then we'll be able to access the motherboard um, and be able to start putting everything back together. So one of the challenges that you noticed that I noticed, sorry, in the beginning of this, uh, this video, uh, the series is that, uh, the mother or sorry, the, uh, hard drive was in here. And I had thought that the screw on this side and the screw was equally on the other side. There were some case designs that had that on both sides. So you had to, I mean, had the back plane removal for a reason. Uh, but fortunately we were able to determine very quickly that that wasn't the case. So, um, this will make it a little easier to get the power wires in where we need it to be. So for this, uh, because it's an AT style case, it has these two connectors. Now it's very, 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 I can't stress enough important, uh, black to black um, when we put this back in here. So it's very important we do that. Otherwise you can cr uh, send five volt and 12 volt power uh, to the rails in the incorrect and you can you know, blow the power supply, you can do damage to the board. Now, fortunately, I've never had that experience where that's happened to me, um, but that's definitely something that I know has happened. And it's just very important that, you know, you take all precautions so that doesn't, does not occur um, just to the nature of, um, you don't want to damage anything that you're working on, especially something of this vintage. You don't want to, you want to make sure it lasts as long as possible. So we have one in there and these connectors are a little different. There we go. We have both of them in there. So they kind of just slide in on an angle and then go down. And then there's a little plastic clip here. You saw in our first video, we were able to go in and um, we were able to go in and 
and take it off individually with a little screwdriver just because I didn't want to break anything there. All right, so we have that in there in place. And so the next thing I want to do is just put the hard drive caddy back in just where um, it's just easier to do while we're already at the stage. And it just it has two little rails here that slide into the rails here. So it's very straightforward. And that's it. Literally, well, it's supposed to be that's it, but there we go. And one of them in and one of them out. So there we go. They're both in. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just screw that in place. Um, you know, slow and steady wins the race. No, uh, no big rush here. So we got that in. And then, so the next step now is to, um, we're going to just go ahead and hook up a couple of the uh, cables that we have for the IDE cable, uh, the floppy drive cable, etc. So I'm going to head and um, let's go see which one we're going to put in first. We're probably going to put in the, the, um, sorry, the CD-ROM drive cable first, just because it's the longest cable. So we're just going to stick it in there up top and get in through navigation of wires here. And so this red pin, this red um, indicator here just goes right up against the um, red uh, side of the power on the back of the IDE drive. So I'm just going to go ahead and pop that in there nice and easily. There we are. I mean, you shouldn't for have to force anything we're doing here. So if you have to, if you feel like you have to force it, you should stop and just think about what's going on and then go back and, you know, you can re you know, reapproach it. And then, so before I go ahead and pop this onto the motherboard, I am going to go ahead and put the other IDE cable on just to be absolutely sure that um, we're good to go on that side as well. So um, just by looking at this cable, this is the way, this is the orientation we're going to put it in. I just want to put the power or sorry, power to the hard drive first, uh, just because of the, um, I'm going to pop that up there just because of the uh, access to the drive. It's just easier to put on from the bottom up so you're not having to navigate around things. And we'll do the same thing here. Let's pop that in. And again, the red stripe, red pin is going towards the red, uh, red to red uh, on, the, on the interface for these IE, IDE drives. All right, we have that in and that in, so it's looking good. Um, I did my best to remove this old uh, rubber band stuff. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get it all but uh, we'll get it as we go. So the motherboard is labeled IDE1, IDE2, and then we have floppy up top. So before I go ahead and start connecting, as I mentioned to the motherboard, let's just go ahead and get the uh, floppy, all the floppy connectors connected uh, to, the, to the appropriate drives. So we're gonna go ahead and just pop that in as well. And uh, that way we can just start to populate the motherboard correctly as we go. There we are. So now we have the floppy IDE cable on. We have the power to the floppy. We have the power to the CD-ROM drive. We have the IDE cable, the CD-ROM drive. I have forgotten about this audio cable either. It's just kind of something that we'll have to plug into the sound card when it comes time. And we have our IDE cables to both our hard drive as well. All right. So let's go ahead and plug the floppy connector to the motherboard. And fortunately, like <laughs> because this system was so nice and clean and tidy. The cables are already pre-bent to the sizes, so we should have no problem getting this uh, getting this in here. And so pin one is showing this side, so the red stripe is gonna go that side as well uh, for all the uh, cabling here. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in to the board. And the nice thing about these, these type of models is that they had the, they had the cables, uh, sorry, the IDE controller and the floppy drive controller, et cetera, right on the board. Now, I mean, all other systems uh, had an actual controller board like our 386 did. So that was something that, um, that was something that uh, is also to be aware of. So IDE1 and IDE2. So IDE1 is the primary IDE controller and IDE2 is a secondary. So, you know, you can do either or, but um, you know, the, the hard drive says master uh, on the series. And so I am going to put it as, as uh, IDE1 uh, on this board. Now, sometimes the boards will also be labeled IDE0, uh, which is just the same as the first one in the series, and then the IDE1 would be the second one. But in this particular case, this board is not labeled IDE, um, IDE1 and IDE2. So let me just go ahead and line this up properly. I don't want to bend any of the pins. 
There we go. And again, you shouldn't have to force anything. It should be fairly straightforward, fairly easy to pop in. And the same thing with the uh, CD-ROM drive. There we are. See? Nice and simple. Just slides right in there. All right. Let's do a sanity check on everything that we have going on here. So we have all of our IDE cables connected to the board, to the individual drives. We also have the floppy drive cable plugged in. We also have all the power cables connected. Um, so that looks all good. And this is securely screwed in. We know the back plane is good to go. And we also have our power connected there as well. So the other thing I'm going to do is just because earlier we had to disconnect the power to the CPU fan itself. I'm just going to go ahead and plug that in now, just so it doesn't get lost in the shuffle as we're doing things. And uh, pretty much straightforward, red to red on that one. Um, and they're all, yeah, they're all pretty much labeled there. So I'll uh, just go ahead and line that up. And these are always fun to get perfectly lined up to be able to fit into each other. Let's go back and forth. And sometimes you just got to wiggle them back and forth to get that on. Or Let's go ahead here. There we are. Nice and easy. Just going to line it up. So we'll pop that in there as well. Just I'm going to stick it in to the floppy drive, um, the secondary flop, three and a half inch um, connector here, just to get it out of the way. I know historically it was all nicely tied up here and cable tied, but we're just not doing that right at this moment. Uh, let's get this all installed. All right. So the other thing that this system came with was Braco cables for the uh, uh, printer um, port as well as the uh, COM ports. So um, we're just going to go ahead and pop in. I'm just looking at the way they are aligned on the board. So we have COM1 here and COM2 uh, on the left. So we're just going to go ahead and I make COM1, the 9-pin uh, COM port. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. And I'm just going to look for pin 1. It should be all aligned on the board, which is sure enough to the left, which is great. And in hindsight, I probably could have put these in first, but that's okay. There we go. One's in, and we'll do the same thing with number 2. Sorry if everyone can't see in there. I'm just trying my best to get this on camera while... Trying to line everything up. It's always a good time. All right, we have one and two affixed to the motherboard. And then this just goes right here. Just goes in, again, it's just a Braco cable. So um, it's pretty straightforward to, to put back in the case. Let's just go ahead and put one screw in there. Just we may as well do it as we go. That way we're not uh, forgetting anything as we go. All right, we have number one in there and we have the the LPT port, the printer port. So again, we have pin one uh, showing uh, to the left again. And I'm just going to pop that in uh, to the uh, computer, uh, to the motherboard, sorry. And just line that up. Again, not trying to force anything, line everything up. Now, this board doesn't have sockets. It just has the pin sticking straight up. Some of the newer boards have the sockets, and then they also have a guide. So it's um, fairly simple to put in and line up, uh, whereas this one you have to be a little more attentive to what you're doing. All right, so we have that in there. Let's put another screw in, and we'll be good to go there. Here we are. Put that screw in, and we're good to go there. All right, so check. We have the uh, COM ports with a parallel port. Uh, we know something else we have to put in here. Uh, again, just we already have the Braco cables already here, so it's uh, pretty good as we go. I think what we're going to do is, I know that, um, I believe the video card was next in our in our series here. So let's go ahead and pop this in to the system. Um, and it also keeps all the cables up top there where they should be. So this just pops right into the PCI port, uh, the first PCI uh, slot on the board. And we'll go ahead and screw that in as well. Now, I know in our other videos, um, I've gone ahead and used Deoxit on the slots. I'm not doing it this time. I mean, I didn't have any issues with the system. It was extremely clean on the inside here. There was very little to no issues um, when putting these in. So I wasn't too worried about that. And um, so I'm just going to continue on. I mean, if we run into any issues, for sure. The only thing I did use Deoxit on was the memory expansion that we had on the... Um, on the uh, sorry the video card so we got that all fixed up all right here we have our isa acer fx 16 um uh, sound card 
beautiful sound card, nice and clean. We're going to pop that into the first uh, ISA slot there. And this is our 16-bit. There we go. It's in there. So we'll screw it in first, and then we'll run that audio cable down just to be complete um, for, the, for the system. All right, we have that in there, nice and tight. And let's go ahead and run our audio cable down inside the case through this little little slot there and it just slides right into that port right on the board so this again this just allows you to play the cd directly from the cd-rom drive to the audio card uh, using the software on the system all right so now uh, the last thing is our 50 or sorry i think this was our 33.6 modem uh, that we had determined it even still has the plastic on it and for the original sake of the system, I'm going to leave that just detached the way it is. Do we need a modem? No. It comes with the system, though, so let, why not leave it in there? So I'm going to leave that in there. And I just noticed that this is also 8-bit. If you notice uh, on the card, it's just an 8-bit card, so I didn't notice that earlier. Okay. Let's go ahead and pop this in. And there we are. Nice and secure in the slot there. We'll get our other screw, and we'll get that popped in there as well. There we are. And there we are. So the next step where we're going to do is get all these little guys installed. So this is the hard drive, LED, all these wonderful pins <laughs> that go to the indicator, the reset button, the turbo button on the front, all those good things. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, get those put in uh, right now. All right, so we've gone ahead, and by the magic of editing, I've gone ahead and entered in or put in all the connectors back to the motherboard the way they should be. And again, just that's always been a vein of all my existence whenever working on these systems was getting that put in. So let's go ahead and get a CR2032 um, uh, coin cell uh, just to put in the Dallas Real Time Clip because that's the whole purpose of what we're going to do here. Okay, so we have our brand new coin cell here, and we're just going to pop it in. Positive side is up, and we'll slide it in here. And the nice thing about this little holder, your little clip, and it just clicks it right into place. And so, like I mentioned before, there's different ways you can actually mount this, uh, just because of the way I have it. Um, some put it right on top of the clock uh, chip, some, you know, tied to the wires. Again, I have capped on tape on here, so I'm not worried about any shorting out. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it to the bottom of the case for now until we have a better solution uh, going forward. So let's go ahead and take some capped on tape and we're just going to go ahead and pop that right on the bottom of the case. And it becomes, you know, easily accessible as well as we uh, need to in the future. So let's go ahead and pop that on the tape and we'll get that, uh, we'll get that put on no problem. Oh, I'm just having some issues with the tape over here, so I'm just getting that uh, put on. And, I mean, some people will, you know, hot glue gun the back of it as well. Uh, I just don't have that here today, but, again, just to get it. So we know the cell's on there. Let's go ahead and just tape it. Again, capped on tape right to the bottom of the case. That keeps it where it needs to be and keeps the power to the chip. There's no tension there. There's no risk of any sort of uh, short or anything, which is which is absolutely great. So there we go. So let's go ahead and get reoriented here. We'll go ahead and plug in the uh, monitor, keyboard, mouse, get everything sorted out and ready to fire the system back up. Okay, so we have our system all set back up for the sake of testing. So let's go ahead and turn the monitor on and get that fired up here. Let's give it a few seconds to warm up there. And the same thing with our tower. Let's go ahead and hit the power button. Everything is spinning back up there. I hear the bearing is a little off there, but nothing, nothing a cold start. I can certainly look at correcting that in a bit. So CMOS settings wrong, CMOS display type wrong, but we're not getting the battery um, error that we had before. So let me go ahead and just go ahead and F1 to resume. And we go in here and make sure, I mean, everything's pretty much just standard. Everything's set to auto. There's nothing to change here. Not from what we originally had, our floppy A drive, uh, one uh, one point four four, and our floppy B drive. We don't have anything installed, and for our uh, secondary master, it's just again set to auto, pretty straightforward. 
And yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and just save everything. Um, and uh, let's see if we can get into the actual system. Shows the S3 Trio video card BIOS. Here we are. We're detecting our drives now, which we never had before. I'm going to hit pause just so we can see in the system. So we never had this before. We never had the ability um, before replacing the actual, um, doing the modification to the RC, RTC chip, where we ran ahead or gone ahead and created that um, that connection to the uh, to the coin cell. So it's great to see this now. Again, the mystery PC, the mystery is starting to come to an end. So we have the BIOS data showing 1995. We have a Pentium 133, which we verify when we had went ahead and took the system apart originally. We have 640k of base memory of 16 megabytes of memory. We have our primary master, which is our automatically detected 1.2 gig hard drive, which is, uh, we did take it out and look at it, but it's great to verify. It's picking up the secondary master, no problem, which is our CD-ROM drive. It's showing the plug and play ISA devices. Nice thing about this uh, drive, uh, sorry, this BIOS, it shows an ESS, ES1868 plug and play audio drive. Uh, as our CD-ROM, or sorry, our, our sound card. And we have our US Robotic Sportster 33.6 fax voice modem in there. That's great. Uh, I'm. You can hear the excitement of my voice because again, it's just, I've had this system for quite a while and I really wanted to save it for the experience to show the series from the beginning to where we are now and getting this A open mystery PC running. It's just really excited to see this. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter. It says starting Windows 95. Because again, that's what was installed in the system. It has not been running. So I hit pause just a moment to show everybody what's going on. And let's go ahead and hit enter and let it go. So Windows 95, Windows Microsoft Internet Explorer installed. And all the lights seem to be working just fine uh, when it comes to turbo, the reset button, and the power indicators. So it looks like we connected everything on the inside pretty well. And here we are loading up to the desktop. Windows found new hardware. I don't know what the new hardware is, to be honest, um, just because, again, it would have been installed. So we're doing all this new together. So Windows is looking for the drivers for this particular hardware. Oh, standard floppy disk controller. Definitely need that. Okay, it seems to have worked. Uh, we want to restart. Absolutely, we want to restart. So we'll let it reboot here. This is a really cool system to have for older DOS gaming. And, and you know, when it comes to stats in the system, I mean, it's a pretty well-rounded system with 16 megabytes of RAM, uh, the, the sound card that's in it, the hard drive, 1.2 gig. We have uh, all the great makings for a good DOS machine. Uh, sorry, a DOS gaming machine. So let's go ahead and let it continue to reboot here. And hopefully we'll get the desktop. The sounds of the hard drive going, it's awesome. System is accessing the floppy drive. It must be one of the pieces of software that's on here. I'm just gonna drag the uh, start menu down to the bottom. All right. And I just noticed one of the things I may not have done was go into the uh, CMOS and actually set the clock because uh, Windows is detecting it as just after midnight, four minutes after midnight, which is not the case. So before we continue, let's just go right back into the CMOS and do a, um, uh, should we start the computer? Well, let's go in the CMOS and just set the date and time because I, I just <laughs> hadn't done that. So we'll go ahead and do that right now uh, just because I want to make sure that all that work was not for naught and we'll make sure that we get the uh, setup done. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit delete there. Oh, I didn't catch it at the time. So we'll get there. I believe it's a delete key. And it is. Okay. So let's go in here under, um, I believe it's under standard date and time. All right. It is not January 1st. It is uh, February the 22nd when I'm making this video. And it is uh, 2023. And the time, I mean, some people don't bother with this. I just like to have it uh, 
have it done. So um, it's after six, so it's 18. And it is 40, uh, 42. Actually, I can just enter, I wonder if I can just enter there, 42. And I'm lock key. No, it's not giving me that option. So I'm just gonna continue doing this. All right, we have that in there. And so let's just double check to make sure the time is still set. And it is, that's wonderful. And we're gonna go ahead and save the settings and let it boot back into Windows. Windows 95. Oh, nice and exciting to have all this uh, up and running. Very uh, long time coming. I mean, all the work going that we did going into this by taking the whole system apart and uh, doing exploring the system and then ultimately going in and uh, repairing that repairing that uh, that RTC mod. So this is really really awesome. Okay, so it's booting back into the Windows 95 desktop. And so again, the system came to me as is. Uh, I mean, I won't show any personal information. So if we come across that, I will blur it out in the video. But, uh, but yeah, the sound card is uh, picking up here this time, which is great. I see the CD-ROM drive has been accessed a few times while it's booting. The floppy drive has been accessed as well. And I'm gonna hover over that second. It says, um, yeah, just a, it's, it looks like a bill reminder uh, type of uh, application. So let's do a little bit of exploring. Uh, we just can't leave the desktop like that, though. We can't. Let's go to something that uh, we're all familiar with in Windows 95. Let's see what's here. We have Waffles Revenge, Triangles, Tile. Uh, let's see what else is here. Do we, do we have the standard? I don't see the clouds. We have bricks, uh, buttons, cargo net all the different uh, different types of Windows backgrounds. Yeah, so that's, oh, sorry, that's the pattern. Let's go over to the wallpaper. I don't know why I didn't pick up on that. That's on me. Okay, went ahead and have clouds for Windows 95. And let's just go into the screensaver real quick here. Why, why not? Let's do our maze. There we go. Let's do a preview of our maze. Classic, classic Windows 95. Uh, so excited to see this system up and running. Uh, and again, the system is just absolutely pristine. And to have it running so smoothly, it's almost like a time capsule where it was purchased and just sat in a room and turned off and not used. It's great. Uh, so under my computer, we have our floppy drive, um, our C drive uh, for our hard drive contents, our control panel, printers, dot networking, and our CD-ROM drive. I don't think there's anything in the CD-ROM drive. Nope, there's nothing in there. Let's go ahead and close it up. And uh, under C drive, we have a bunch of uh, different documents and things like that, different files, but we're not gonna dig into that uh, on today's video, but uh, for control panel, let's see what's in here. Uh, let's rearrange that. Uh, let's rearrange them, there we go. So we have all of our add new programs, add new hardware, our display settings, uh, our modems, which of course would be our, our Sportster voice, 33.6 modem. We won't be connecting to the internet today, that's for sure. Uh, let's go into our system settings. And yeah, it just shows a Pentium, uh, 16 megabytes of RAM registered to G. So no, no one was registered to the system. Windows 95B version. I know that there was a couple, there's A, B uh, versions, and there was also other releases um, with USB support and et cetera um, later on as well. But this particular version is B. Under device manager, I mean, we've pretty much gone through um, the hardware together, but we do have a, a next CD-ROM drive in the system. We have just generic, it's just showing generic IDE uh, type 48, which would be the custom, which it picked up automatically, which was the 1.2 gigabyte. Then we have our neck floppy disk as well. That's there. Um, under display adapters, we have our S3 Trio 64V. Our floppy disk controllers, which are just standard, and our hard drive, uh, or sorry, hard disk controllers, which is for our hard drives. So we have four devices to this. Uh, it is showing uh, it's an Intel. And then we have our just standard keyboard, which is an AT style keyboard. Again, just pristine keyboard, metal. <laughs> it's awesome. Our modem, which we already talked about, which is our Sportster voice. Uh, monitor, just picking up a standard BGA monitor. I'm pretty sure that we can extend the video settings of that as well because it has picked up the video display drivers. We have our standard serial mouse. Uh, so again, this is just the regular ball mouse from Radio Shack, no less. Uh, that's what came with the system. 
And yeah, under sound, we have our ESS ES1868 uh, plug and play audio drive um, with our game port uh, joystick in the back as well. So that's great uh, that we have all that. We have 88% resources free of our 16 megabytes of RAM. So let's go ahead and I just mentioned that a moment ago. Let's go ahead and just change our, see if we can change our settings uh, for our uh, desktop. So I'm not seeing an ability to change uh, change our, and it's probably because it's considered a standard BGA monitor, but I believe this monitor can certainly do higher resolutions. So I believe it's limiting, uh, here we go, apply. There we go. Everything's fine. I believe it's just limiting the resolution. There we go. It's exactly what was happening because, uh, because it was set to just, a. A 1024 by 768, um, oh, sorry, 640 by 480 monitor. And because it was set that as a driver, the video card was being limited by the resolution it could be set at. And yeah, and here we are. I mean, we have, um, we're just going to go ahead and center the, uh, or tile. Wow. Okay. Yeah. You can, uh, I don't remember Windows 95 tiling like this. And, and I do remember it doing it, but I thought there was an option to stretch as well, but uh, we don't have that on here. So yeah, it's just really cool to uh, to see this operating system up and running, this AOPEN mystery PC that we work so closely together on and getting it up and running. And we're using the same real-time clock that was in here that was preventing us from doing it. So yes, the system did not come with a coin cell holder. Uh, we had to do the modification to do it, but now it's set for life. I mean, in the event that that battery dies, we can just pop a new one in. There's no more modifications we have to do which is uh, which is pretty awesome. So uh, again, uh, let's just see what, if there's a, what other programs are installed in here. We do have Microsoft Word on here. Uh, what version of Word do we have installed on here? I was like, oh, Word 97. I was like going back and uh, looking at the, um, the uh, different software that's installed in these systems and versions and remembering back to where <laughs> our, the software came from back in the day. Uh, but yeah, um, so again, it's just really cool to see all the uh, different software. We have 1997 Groiler Multimedia Encyclopedia. I'm not sure if this requires the CD. Um, it does. I'm not going to put that in for today's video. Just hoping that it was going to um, pop up there. But we also have NHL 98. Um, we have our encyclopedia, as I mentioned. We have our HP DeskJet 680C, uh, which was would have been installed. Now, I did not get that with the system. I'm sure the original owners had tossed it based on the age. We have Microsoft Golf, um, we have our multimedia, we have Microsoft Office, uh, we have Mist uh, installed on here, which is pretty awesome. Um, yeah, it's just really cool to see all the different applications that are installed on here. Uh, let's go into our games and see what's in here. So yeah, we just have our regular Solitaire and all those good things. So again, if you uh, like today's video, um, please give it a thumbs up. I'm really excited to get this up and running. Really excited I was able to share this experience with all the YouTube viewers out there. And I love bringing this nostalgia back to everybody um, on the channel. So again, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Uh, please share. Please tell your friends. Uh, really excited to continue to go and do all these new videos for everybody. Um, I have so much older hardware, all these good things on so many more videos planned for everybody. And again, just uh, keep on going and keep on sharing all these uh, wonderful older nostalgic experiences with everybody. So again, if you um, if you like, again, just please, uh, please comment below if you'd like to put any requests in or any other videos you'd like to see. Again, thanks a lot for spending the time uh, with me today, not only today, but through the entire series uh, of the AOPEN Mystery PC, which is no longer a mystery. And we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.